Good afternoon, conference. Thank you for abandoning your teacups and coming back to hear me. I'm very impressed. Good afternoon, all you people are still in the arena drinking tea. I didn't hear you. Right, well, I have a confession to make. Today is confession time. As Patricia Hewitt said to Harriet Harman, And I have to confess that for most of my life, I have been a conservative. It's terrible, isn't it? But, well, it all happened. I didn't know anything. They didn't teach me about politics when I was at school. It was only when I went up to university and went down to sort of Freshers' Conference and there were the conservatives and the Labour and the Liberals. They were Liberals then. They, they weren't democratic then. They're not democratic now, so it's not, not much has changed. Uh, dear old Nick Clegg, who says, oh, no, we can't entrust the decision and, on an in-out uh, of the European Union to actually the voters. I mean, what, you know, they, what could we possibly do worse than that? So, no, I, I listened to the ones there, and I found the Conservatives one a little bit more uh, my cup of tea than the rest, and so I've joined the party. And, um, you know, it, the years went on, and uh, yeah, I remained active in the Conservative Party, and then... When I retired from my job as headmaster of a, of a school in Hillingdon, um, because I said, well, I'd been asked before, but I said, oh, I, I can't as a headmaster. I must be completely, um, un, you know, I mustn't have anything to do with politics at all. Which I think all, all teachers should be the same, really. But anyway, the next time the elections came round, they said, oh, but you've retired now. So, you know, that excuse won't wash. So, of course, I found myself standing for election as a Conservative councillor in Runnymede, a place where democracy was born. How about that? And, surprise, surprise, well, not really, because it's a Conservative council, I was elected, and I served for eight years, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. But then, I fell out with the Conservative Party, and uh, it was because our very good MP decided to retire, having gone over the age of 70, and we, all the members of the council were agreed that we persuaded our leader to stand in his stead. He devoted 20 years of his life to politics in uh, Runnymede and 10 years as leader of the council. And guess what happened? We put him forward. You can't imagine, can you? He was vetoed by Conservative Central Office. And they insisted on putting up for us two failed Conservative MPs and one young person who didn't know anything about politics anyway, a financial chap from the city. So we had absolutely no choice. We refused to accept the two people who lost their seats because Honeymead was a safe seat. And we chose the youngster and, you know, he's turned out to be quite good. But we were so furious that uh, I said, look, I will not have anything to do with the party which is so undemocratic. <laughs> so since then, I haven't. But having resigned from the Conservative Party, I then found over a year or so, I'd been so much involved in politics, there was a large, a large hole in my life. I thought, well, what can I do about this? I really would like to be involved in politics. I enjoyed it. Can't be a Conservative, can't be a Liberal Democrat, can't be a, a Labour. What else is there? And I couldn't find much else then. And, and I hadn't, I'm not sure, because UKIP's only been around for 20 years. And so I thought, my, my wife comes from Germany. And I found out when on one of our many visits that there was a senior citizens party in Germany. Did you know that? No, I didn't. So I got together with them next time we went over to Germany. Because um, I'm fluent in German. I've taught German and French all my life. And I talked to them about that, and they said, oh, you know, it's jolly good, you know, Senior Citizens Party. Excellent, because we all know that the senior citizens are the ones who vote. A much higher percentage. So I came back and thought, oh, there's nothing like that in England, so let's start one. So I founded the Senior Citizens Party ten years ago, just about half the length of time that UKIP was founded. Um, but at that time, I didn't really know anything about UKIP at all. And, of course, since then... I've seen the light, haven't I? So, as Steve said, I've brought along some of my senior members to the conference. 
in London, and uh, they all liked it. Uh, and I found that some of them had already joined YouTube anyway, <laughs> without my having to ask them. And so um, we've now decided that uh, the time has come. We've done, we've done what we could, actually, for seniors. We've never, I, I stood in two general elections, and I led a team for the European election one year. Uh, but we've never been able to get a, a seat, and I, I wasn't really surprised. But we have been able to lobby ministers and prime ministers, and people will write to their MPs and complain about this and that or the other, or ask them to do things. So we have been active, but I think now the time has come uh, for a new age, for a new democracy, a sort of democracy that UKIP represents and can represent, because it has the power to do so. So with effect from today, all the members of the Senior Citizens Party, that's something between three and 4,000, will join forces with UKIP and we shall... <laughs> we should be really proud to join you. And as I say, you already have a youth independence section, which I learned all about, because, of course, you quite rightly, you need to get branches going in the universities. So you need a youth section. So when I met Steve after the last conference, I said, well, have you ever thought of having a senior section as well? And he said, well, no, we haven't. I said, well, you know, you know as well as I do that 43% uh, of the voters are over 50, which we count as the age of seniority. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, they are the ones that vote, so shouldn't we get them into UKIP? And he said, oh, we'll have to have a chat about that. So that's what happened, and today is the day when the Senior Citizens Party, all their members, will join the fight for UKIP, for the European elections. We want to sweep the board with the European elections, and, of course, the local elections. As Steve already said, I'm standing in the Chertsey by-election, uh, we've got one member on Runnymede Borough Council. I hope it'll be two after the 13th of March, so wish me luck. <laughs> because anyone who says there isn't a lot of luck in politics doesn't know really what they're talking about. <laughs> because you do need luck, but I'm fighting hard. I'm going around. I start canvassing uh, Sunday morning when I go back, and I shan't stop until Election Day. So. Thank you very much for listening to me. We're delighted to support you. I'm sure, in fact, of course, um, that there are many people uh, here who are already members of UKIP uh, who are what we call seniors. We designate you as seniors. So we will work together with everyone to try and help UKIP to develop senior policies. There are a lot of things that worry seniors at the moment, not least, of course, was the one that was mentioned this morning about uh, life-saving drugs being withdrawn from people who are over a certain age because it's not worth, it, you know, not worth the money to keep them alive for only a few more years. And I think that is absolutely disgraceful. Hear, hear. So our aim, as I said, is to sweep the board at European elections, which I'm sure we're going to do, and the following year Oh, I should think about 500 local councillors, five or 600 local councillors, and Nigel and a dozen UKIP members of parliament. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first day of my new life, and I'm proud of it.